was a work of art. It was a work of art. Hey everybody, Pete Werner here with today's Disney Dining Show. Coming to you from the top of the beautiful Riviera Resort, Topolino's Restaurant. Very lucky to be able to get a reservation here today. Um, sometimes it helps to have friends and because it's really tough to get in here. I was trying and they were booked out for weeks. Uh, it was really hard to get anything. So, and I've never done dinner here. I've done the breakfast, but I've never done dinner. And uh, joined by some friends and a fiasco and his wife. And so we're gonna check it out. And just a reminder, this video, along with all the videos we produce, brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, of which I am one of the owners. If you like our content, please show your support. Book your next Disney vacation through Dreams. Remember, it does not cost you a dime extra. You'll pay the same amount of money you pay Disney, but you'll get a great personal travel agent to help answer all your questions and help you plan the greatest vacation you've ever had. So please, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. We appreciate your support. So, um, for the table, there are six of us here tonight. Not all of us are doing the review, right? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. She did it before. I don't know why it's a problem now. But anyway, I love her, so it doesn't matter. She can do whatever she wants. Um, we ordered uh, all the appetizers on the menu for the table to share. That was an olives marinade. Lemon, garlic, marjoram, bay leaf on the olives. Um, a regat, a tomato, uh, aged balsamic, cracked pepper, basil, epi. That was $14. The olives were nine. Um, the regat, uh, ricotta dish uh, was 14 uh, The gnocchi, which was a duck confit, a pesto bianco, garden kale, pine nuts. That was $16. Um, I will tell you, the ricotta and the gnocchi and the olives were all excellent. Excellent. The ricotta was fresh. I'm saying ricotta because that's what people, I always call it regat, but um, it was fresh. It was really well done with the tomato, uh, the balsamic, everything in there was really good. The gnocchi was a work of art. It was a work of art was so good with that duck confit and the, and the, the, the sauce that was in, oh my God, it was incredible. Um, so I really liked it. Um, for my main course, however, I went with the tomahawk veal chop. Um, comes with a potato spring onion gratin and a lemon veal jus for $52. The gratin was ve is very good. It really is. It's very, very good. The tomahawk veal chop itself is really well prepared. It's well cooked. It is a good quality piece of meat. Unfortunately, where the wheels come off the wagon is the lemon veal jus. That is far more bitter than it needs to be. I don't know, I don't think I've ever had a jus sauce before with veal that was like almost like vinegar. Um, the finish was almost like vinegar. It was very, very bitter, and it did not need to be. It completely ruined the dish. Completely ruined the deal. Um, and that's unfortunate. But like I said, the gratin, very good. Appetizers, very good. Veal chop itself, very good. But they need to go do something with that sauce because that sauce was terrible. I could not, with that sauce on it, could not recommend you spend $50 on this dish. All right, so like Pete mentioned, we got a ton of appetizers, all of the appetizers to be exact. <laughs> what I do want to also mention though is they do have bread service here with dinner. 
everybody gets bread and oil and the bread is quite good. They're like these little miniature skinny French baguettes. They're kind of tougher bread, but it's really good. Um, so as far as the appetizers are concerned, I've gotten the olives before. I've talked about the olives before and I ate them again today. Uh, they are pretty good, but you kind of got to be an olive person to like them. There's a really strong vinegar taste to it as well, uh, but I like them. I like them a lot, and uh, that's really the only appetizer I tried, but I know you tried appetizer stuff. Yeah, I tried the ricotta, and there was also like a little tomato paste um, side, and it was all delicious. Um, I dipped the bread in it, and it was very, very light, but you, but not, no, maybe not very light. The ricotta was very light, but you can get full really fast. <laughs> so like. I didn't eat the ricotta because it's not my cup of tea, but just knowing from eating other restaurants, when I saw it hit the table, I thought deconstructed bruschetta. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, something without like some of the ingredients in a bruschetta, but yes. Okay. But it was it, it, it was really good. I did try it. It was really good. So your entree. So yeah, so the entree I got was the rigatoni. It was $32. And I have to say, it is probably my favorite dish of all Walt Disney World. It is made to perfection. Um, it is super creamy, rich. It's very, very filling. Um, it just, I don't even know how to describe it, so I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> so it is braised chicken sugo. And excuse me if I did pr pronounce anything wrong. Um, braised chicken sugo, broccolini, wild mushrooms, and parmesan cheese. Um, it's just the most delicious pasta dish ever. I, I don't even know how to, ex how to explain no, it. No, she's not lying. Uh, I, this, so this is the third time that I've had dinner here. The other two times I got the filet, which is amazing. We're going to hear about the filet. And I also have tried this, and both, both dishes are just insanely good. It's so fresh. I can tell they made it, like, that day. And it's, it's just so soft. It, like, it really does melt in your mouth. It, and it, it comes with asparagus. I think it, it seems like it comes with, like, a little bit of spinach as well. Uh, it's not on the menu, but I, that's what I tasted. But um, overall, this dish is just... It's phenomenal. It's, I don't even. I don't even know. Yeah. I've been like begging Corey to come back here and try to make reservations are difficult to get. It is so hard. Very difficult and to get. I literally want to come here like on every single special occasion just for this dish alone. This time I decided to try something new, and I got the classic Sol Monair. Got it. Nailed it. Said it right. I practiced. That was fifty bucks. That comes with sea beans, capers, lemon, and petite potatoes. Now, if you were here at the uh, before all the closures, there was actually an experience that went into this being served, where they actually the waiter brought it out and deboned it in front of you. Since they reopened, they're now just deboning it in the kitchen, obviously, and bringing it out with the potato stuffed down the center. Uh, this is really good. The lemon flavors are really good. Uh, it's a, the, the sauce has butter in it, which normally I don't love butter. I don't love the idea of butter, but it didn't bother me. I really didn't notice it at all. Um, and yeah, the, uh, the, it's not really a super fishy taste. Uh, the sole is the fish, and I, I'm not familiar with sole. I've been eating a lot of fish lately, but not familiar with sole. Um, and it's not, it, I'd put it in the medium spectrum as far as a fishy tasting fish. Now the skin, uh, is extremely crispy and the fish inside is extremely flaky. That is how I like it. I, I, I really would recommend would recommend this a lot. Um, this would go down as you know the third the third entree item at dinner that I've tried and they've all been great. I Topolinos every time I've been here Fantastic. breakfast, lunch, dinner every time. It's just a slam dunk. But they hit very, it out of the park. It's very hard to get into, though. It is very and, and difficult. I've been, and I, I've been asking you and asking you, but it's hard to get into. It is. <laughs> so glad we were able to do it yes. tonight. So this is Denny and I's first time coming here. Uh, like he mentioned, we got all three of the appetizers that they have on the menu. I tried the ricotta and the gnocchi. The ricotta is not something I usually enjoy, but this one was very delicious. It was very light, uh, like Haley had mentioned, and it also came with um, with a tomato side, and that was also very good. Yeah, but the gnocchi, really good. yeah, but my the gnocchi was definitely my favorite one. That was delicious. I didn't really know what to expect with that. That's not something I would generally get, uh, but since it was on the table, I got it, and I really enjoyed that a lot. Uh, for the uh, entree, I got the filet mignon, which was with uh, truffle mashed potatoes, 
charred spring onion forest mushroom puree vinaigrette, and that is $54. Uh, that was honestly a delicious steak. Um, we are both big steak people. I've paid triple the amount of money for our steak, and that was right up there with them. Um, it was super tender. I could legitimately cut it with my fork. Uh, the vinaigrette that it was in was delicious, and I also love the mashed potatoes. Every, I could lick the plate. It was <laughs> highly recommended, and I definitely enjoyed it. Um, and I also tried some of Janine's dinner, which was also very good. So I got the rigatoni, the same as Haley, per her recommendation, and I will say it was definitely excellent. I would definitely get it again. Um, the chicken was tender, the broccolini was cooked to perfection, and even the pasta, you could just taste how fresh it was. I really enjoyed this. Um, so I'm usually a person that will go for a filet, but I'm so happy that I got this, and I definitely think that I will consider getting it in the future. All right, so I did not try the appetizers. I've been here a few times, so I've had them previously, even the olives. They're all very good if you like what they are. Um, if you like olives, they're great olives. If you like the ricotta, it's really great ricotta. Um, I decided to do something different. I got the root bisque as a, my appetizer, so that is on the starter's menu. It is a soup. It's parsnip, celery root, heirloom tomato, sorry, heirloom apples, and uh, cacao nibs and sorrel. I have no idea what sorrel is. Um, but so they essentially have like the uh, heirloom apples going out the side, and then they come and like they pour the rest of it on it. Very earthy, very um, root. I mean, it's a root bisque, so uh, very like earthy tasting, and it really has a lot of that parsnip taste to it. Excellent. It's so, so, so good. I would have gotten the whole bowl of it as my meal if I could have. Like, that would have been great. And so that is $13. It just, like, it was $13. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was $13. It was, it was really good. I didn't realize it was that much for a cup of soup. Um, but um, I uh, also got the uh, diver scallops as my main course, and those are new to the menu. So they are $49, and they are uh, scallops. I got four of them, and they were really good size for the four of them, and they are from Nova Scotia. Um, I, so if you've had the ones at Flying Fish, they are from Hokkaido in Japan. These are Nova Scotia. And I could taste a bit of the difference there because it's a, a little bit colder of an environment. So usually when fish or scallops or shrimp or, or lobster or whatever comes from colder places, it tends to be sweeter. These definitely were, and they were actually really well made. If you followed the journey, I always get, have bad luck with scallops. These were really good. They were perfectly cooked. They, there was no grit. There was It was translucent inside the way it's supposed to be. And uh, they came with spring vegetable risotto, asparagus, emerald crystal lettuce, and Meyer lemon oil. I did not see any lettuce. I don't know what that is. Um, that may have been, I, yeah, there was no lettuce. I'm not sure what that was about. But the risotto was amazing. It was so well cooked. I tend to go for like cheese risottos or mushroom or something like that, which is phenomenal. But this, uh, the spring vegetable was really great. So 49 bucks for that. I paid way more for seafood dishes because seafood can be really expensive. Paid more for a lot less. So uh, Topolino, great choice. Okay, so for dessert, I decided to try the pistachio mousse. This is a uh, chocolate cake, lemon curd, and morello cherry for $12. Um, it was good. It was good. The pistachio mousse itself was very good. They put a lemon curd in the middle, which didn't need to be there. It, it's like sometimes you can do too much and you don't have to. The pistachio mousse stood on its own. The Morello cherries were fine. Uh, overall, it was good, but I could have done without the lemon curd in the middle, but it was still very good dessert. All right, so we got the fruits of the forest. It's a black currant mousse, blueberry sorbet, but it was actually a basil sorbet. The waiter told us that it was a basil sorbet. And marinated berries and hibiscus cake, it was $14. Um, overall, I... I didn't really enjoy it that much. I kind of, it kind of tasted a little sour, a little, it was a little too strong of a flavor for me. But the basil sorbet was fantastic. It was very light, earthy, fresh. I would love to order that just by itself next I time. That's what I probably would do. Um, but overall, meh. 
I mean, yeah, if they could just have the basil sorbet and just in a cup and just feed yes. that to me, that'd be delicious. However, I did really like this a lot. Um, so the thing about it that Haley mentioned was the raspberry flavor. That's the super potent, overpowering yeah. flavor. I love raspberry though. Raspberry is my jam. I love sour stuff too. So for me, that was really refreshing. Another thing that we should mention, this is the plant-based vegan dessert. So on this menu, you have three uh, desserts to choose from. And out of the three, this is the only vegan dessert. So as far as vegan options are concerned though, I would say this is a pretty Oh, it's a one. great vegan option for sure. So for dessert, Danina got the warm chocolate cake that came with a caramel center, chantilly, and raspberries for $14. Uh, the presentation was beautiful and everything on the plate was delicious. It came with a uh, whipped cream that was very good and it was just like basically a, your typical lava cake but just done very well. Yeah, personally, I think I would have preferred just like a chocolate inside of the, as like the lava filling instead of the caramel, but overall it, it was pretty good. Um, having the like raspberry on the plate to mix in was, was really great as well. Um, the vanilla ice cream was delicious and even the whipped cream was really tasty as well. Yeah. All right, so I got the pistachio also, just like Pete got. I thought it was good. It was not very flavorful, I would say. It was very light. Like, you know how people say light or something like, oh, this is very light, where it feels like, oh, it was good, but airy. This was just kind of not flavored, but also light at the same time. Um, so it's fine. I think that when you pick something like pistachio and someone chooses it, they pick it because they love pistachio. Um, kind of like if you're picking key lime and it does it's a hint of key lime taste. And I'm like, no, I like key lime. I want key lime. So with this, if you're getting a pistachio dish, it needs to be like, it needs to have the actual pistachios and, and then like the dusting of it and the flavor of it and all that because people who actively choose desserts that are nut based want that taste. So I think that's really what I'd change about it. but. I, for the 12 bucks, I would actually get another bowl of the root bisque that I had earlier. <laughs> so I would, I, so I guess I'd prefer that or maybe like a scoop of ice cream or something. So I'm okay on this. I, I'll, I'd i pass next time. Okay, so uh, we were six adults. No one was drinking. There was no alcohol. Um, because we're a table of six, gratuity was included. Total $509 before any discounts. Um, for even though I had slight issues with like the juice sauce or whatever, they were minor. They were minor. Uh, pulled the table before doing this on a scale of one to 10, what would they give it? Um, everyone with the exception of Fiasco and I gave it a nine and a half. Fiasco gave it a 10, I gave it a nine. Um, so what you're looking at is roundly a really happy table. And at $85 a minute per, per adult for appetizer, main course, dessert, great caliber uh, quality of food, um, and really, really well prepared. I could make, like I said, I had exception with the way a couple things were done, but they were personal. They weren't, you know, like, oh my God, this guy can't cook. Um, so I think this place deserves its reputation. I think it deserves a reputation as a great place to eat. There's a reason it's very hard to get a reservation here. And I think that's going to remain the case. More than a year after they opened, they're still very popular. And there was some uh, talk on our DVC fan Facebook group that this was overrated. I don't think it's overrated. Um, so everybody at this table has eaten at a lot of Disney restaurants for a long time. And they're handing out nines, nine and a halves, and tens. That says something. So, Topolino's, I really enjoyed this meal. It was really, really a great place to come and have dinner with friends and talk and enjoy great food and uh, absolutely be back here again. So that is going to do it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next week.